Hi, my name is Mickey. I'm a software developer and about a month ago I stumbled on a really amazing tool called Subframe, which is a React component library that I've been using every day since I've started using it to design almost all my React projects simply because I hate design and as a developer I really want to just spend more time actually building the project rather than designing it and this is the newest crazy AI leveraging tool that can be incorporated into your project. So starting off, it's a really amazing user interface. I mean, you'd probably expect that from a component library, but one of the things I love about Subframe is their theme template. So you can sort of copy uh, the theme templates that um, many large uh, companies use. You know, we've got Google Airbnb here. I usually default to uh, Stripe here and then I'll change the color to whatever project that my client is working with or would prefer and then usually when I pull it into my project I'll just customize the theme from there if it needs any more tweaks and changes but I really love this setup where you, from the get-go you can get a really nice um, template essentially or a template um, Tailwind CSS and then we can just set our corner radius. I'm definitely not the type of person to use uh, as you know zero border radius um, if you are you're insane so i usually go for small or medium uh, large i mean it's okay but it looks a bit you know rounded so usually i go for medium which is th the best option um, you can also see uh, an edit theme we've got light and dark which is amazing um, i mostly use dark theme because i work at night quite a lot uh, but we're gonna just stick for light theme for this video a really really big uh, icon library i mean if you use react you'll know about blue side um, icons and you can see as i'm scrolling here there are a lot of icons to pick from so there's no shortage of them and then the documentation so the installation of these components inside of your project is super easy the documentation is great and it makes it really really quick and you can also sync uh, your component updates in uh, subframe with that of your project so if you want to make changes and completely control your design uh, from subframe and then uh, have that or also update inside of uh, your project you can have that switched on i don't do that personally but if that's something you're interested in that is definitely an option there as well you can also build your own custom components inside of the application if you would like uh, there are also uh, many that are just built by um, subframe themselves and i use these pretty much exclusively I don't really need to build my own custom components because the component library is so amazing right now then going into templates templates are one of my favorite uh, aspects of this application is that not only are you getting the components but you can see different pages how the components are used on those pages and there is so many to choose from I mean you can see me scrolling here and <laughs> there's there's so many but if we just take a look at some like let's say a search in here dashboard and we have some really, really nice UIs in here. Really amazing. And at any point, if you want to uh, change, if we go back to our components, and then we go back to our theme, edit theme, and let's say we want to switch it up. We want to go for an Airbnb look with uh, the rose color, and we apply those changes. We can go back to templates, and you're instantly seeing it in that new theme. So if you're switching between client projects, and you want to get a different feel for how things are going to look it's as simple as just going and clicking a button it's absolutely insane and because it's a react uh, component library or uh, a react component centered library you wouldn't really expect there to be landing pages as much but they have some really amazing landing pages in fact i'm thinking of redoing my website and this landing page here is exactly what i want to be using uh, for my home page and so not only are there really practical uh, UI elements and pages that you can incorporate to your project, but there are some really amazing landing pages there as well. And so here in pages, here's the main awesome thing about this tool is that when we choose to start a new page, we can either remix an existing uh, design that we have, we can import an image. So we could just take a screenshot of something and then we could um, add that to the page and then from the AI and say, hey, can we redesign this in these different ways? We can import from Figma so you can take your own designs, uh, designs and then edit them themselves. And so there are so many opportunities rather than just sticking with a uh, already made template, you can customize it really easily yourself just using AI. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back. I'm going to reset my theme because the 
design I want to show you looks best in green. So we're going to make that, yeah, emerald. That's, that's good enough. So let's go back to pages. There's a website and company that I uh, use a lot and it's called uh, Reportal and they're an amazing uh, company for uh, land parcels in the US. So if you're working in real estate, which I do a lot, most of my clients need land parcels. And so I use Reportal to uh, access the API, uh, get new parcel data and serve these applications that I build. Now, they're an amazing company, great services. The website is needs a little bit of a spruce up i'm going to be honest i don't want to uh, say that it's a bad design but i think it could use some improvement and so the first thing i really did when i started using subframe is i thought okay how about i try and redesign uh, report halls uh, user interface of their uh, application or their account their account side of things and it worked really well now as i'm going through these pages that i redesigned for report all what i'll do is i'll also layer over the image that uh, used to look like sort of the before and after and you can see simply just by taking a screenshot and then sending it to uh, the AI redesigner and say hey redesign this to make it look more modern sleek and have a better user interface <laughs> we can get some pretty amazing results and then right at the end what we will do is we'll redesign a page that they already have and see how that looks live as we go so this is the first one um, the account dashboard let's just go into preview uh, you can see, you know, pretty simple layout. We've got our um, sidebar here. We've got the account dashboard, update profile, and I'm a preview mode now. So um, some of these buttons don't don't always work, um, but when you import them into your project, like I do, it's a lot easier to just get a, like get paint on the canvas, get all these components and pages built, put them into my uh, project, and then just take it from there, uh, so I can move as fast as possible. Uh, so then, if we go next. We've also got the uh, account profile. Um, we can see how much, you know, how much data that they've entered. Um, we've also got username, email address, all these details a lot, a lot smoother and cleaner than uh, the previous layout. And one of the things I did notice with uh, Reportal's UI is sometimes there was a lot of inconsistencies with border radius, colors. Sometimes you had, you know, an input that was, you know, border radius of zero. And then, you know, the next page, there might be one with a border radius of eight. So there was a lot of inconsistencies that really get negated when you use uh, Tell and CSS and you really rely on your theme to dictate all of these things. It sort of just takes it out of the process for you and you don't have to think about it because you're all just completely uh, relying on your Tell and CSS. Uh, here's the downloads page. Now, this was empty for me because I haven't got any downloads yet, but this is sort of the design that I thought would look really good. You know, a card central layout, um, the file size, how many parcels are contained inside of that download. Then we've got the API dashboard, probably the most important page in the whole application. This design is much better, you know, having a um, graphic uh, sort of centered user interface you know, progress bar for how many parcels, we've improved that. Client key is a lot more centered. And then we've also got, you know, uh, the terms and conditions. Everything just looks a lot more smooth, cleaner, and well, well structured compared to what it was before. And then payment options. I don't know what it is, but having the Visa and MasterCard uh, logo in there to just signify that they're, we're storing your cards, to me, is just a really cool aspect of the UI. Also having, you know, total spending. I definitely did not spend that much money that month. Uh, this is just a number that was made up. You can see, uh, you can see in the bottom left, we've also got Mickey, I'm the founder. You can see the images. Definitely not me, but I mean, close enough, right? Close enough. So let's just get out of preview right now. And before we redesign a new page, I forgot to tell you something. One of the most amazing features of this application is the fact that we can press this code sidebar and we now see the entire page code. And not only that, you can see export to cursor, export to bulb and export to replit. So I use replit a lot. If I had to choose between any of these, I would use replit. I mainly just use uh, VS code when I'm working on my own IDE. But if I was to use an AI agent to build my project, I would be pretty much exclusively working with replit. And so 
<laughs> you can just build your project and then export it into Replit. And that is so powerful because not only are you able to now essentially vibe design, you can also vibe code. So you can build your project here how you want it. And then you can start your project in Replit and import your entire uh, component library and just get started. And you, you're, you don't have to sort of rely on this on this AI to do all your pages and all your components and sort of have this guesswork. You can get it all solid right here where you need. And then when you're ready, move on and you're going to move a lot more faster when you're building a Replit now or any of these uh, agentic applications because the, the user interface is already built. The pages are already built. You just need to add the logic now. So we're really getting to a point now where AI is sort of taking over and anyone can build applications. So it's super exciting. So here we are on Reportal's main landing page or their website. It's got a really nice design, some really, really cool videos, uh, nice animations, probably some GSAP in there. Everything looks really good. Like these are some cool designs going on and I really love it. So the, the landing page, amazing. Doesn't need a redesign or anything. The application itself, yeah, probably does. So you can see here, we've got uh, a new page we haven't added and it's, so LandGlide is uh, Reportal's sort of parcel uh, mapping application that you can go in and, and use and find, you know, who lives at what parcel, how much does it cost, uh, all these real estate parcels all over the world, mainly the US, but also some in Australia and New Zealand. And this is where you can um, pay for users to be added to your account. So you can essentially have an organization and then users um, not having to pay because you're paying for their seat. So this is a page that definitely needs to be redesigned. So that's what we're going to do now. So all I really need to do is, I'm just gonna screenshot this. There's some thunder in the background. So if you're hearing some weird sounds, that's probably what it is. Uh, I'm just gonna screenshot this and we're gonna build a new page. I'm going to drag and, I'm just going to drag and drop. That's it. Now, I usually give some pretty specific uh, requirements for my AI when, when I'm prompting it and I want it to design something. I usually say, you know, oh, I want a card layout. I want it to be structured like this. And I give some pretty uh, specific requirements. Right now, what I want to do is I just want to see how vague I can be and how much better we can build this. So we're going to say, uh, so we're going for a pretty broad prompt here. We're just saying refresh this design to be more modern and more modern and sleek and have a progress bar for showing how many user seats have been used up. I think that's pretty good. So uh, the really, one of the really cool things about subframe is that they give you four designs. So when you do a prompt, it will give you four different options that you can choose from. And most of them are pretty different. So I'm really excited to see how this turns out live. Now you can also see that I didn't screenshot uh, the, the sidebar as well. And this is because the navigation, the side nav is part of the default page layout. So when you're building a new page, this is going to be here by default. Uh, so you want to only sort of capture things that aren't in the navigation, otherwise it might get confused and you might get, you know, a navigation and then a top nav or something. So just try to make sure if you're prompting and trying to change things, uh, you want to make sure that you're only screenshotting uh, the actual content that you want. Uh, the nav's already going to be there. Another amazing thing that we can do, and we will probably do in here, is we can take a design that it has come up with and then iterate on that prompt. And that's what I've done very recently, is that a client would come to me and they would have a, a very, very uh, basic wireframe or a, a sketch. And what I can do is I'll take that wireframe, I'll uh, and put it into the AI, I'll start prompting, start getting something that looks really good. Once it's good, I'll go back to my client. I can even share uh, this to um, somebody's email. And if they're a viewer, they don't have to pay for anything. They can just create an account for free. And so they can then view this, send me some pointers on what they want to change. And then I can just rap rapidly uh, iterate in here and they can just view it again. And it's super, super fast and really good for collaboration. So let's look, we've got this one here. This is nice. It's pretty, it is pretty minimalist, but I don't, you know, there isn't, there's a lot of white space down here and we could use with something, yeah, like this, where there's um, a bit, a bit more, you know, a bit more meat to it, you know, something, something that's a little bit more interesting. Uh, so these are good. I like this. I like this one. So let's actually, what we'll do is we'll apply this design. I really like this. And we're going to go back out. 
and we're going to ask a follow-up. And so in this one, we're going to say underneath the current users, which is here, add a progress bar that spans the forward. This is pretty, pretty simple. And we're going to see how, how well it deals with this. Most of the time it's been really efficient. I like that. That's good enough. I was imagining it, it could potentially um, create a uh, another whole category or sorry another whole um, element itself but adding it to the bottom you know that that's not bad that's not bad at all and so now we can go back out um, we can change our page directly from here and edit our designs as well and we can also select elements on the page if we wanted to select specifically you know this element and add the seat usage bar down below I could have done that however I did imagine it would add a new um, element into the page one thing i haven't even mentioned yet is that this editor is also completely compatible to be drag and drop with your different components and you can interact and redesign them on the fly as you go so if you're familiar with webflow or wix or framer this is not quite on that level but it still allows a lot of granular level control over the elements themselves you can see we've got you know we can change the labels if we need we've got different variants we have different um, heights, we can uh, change our tail and classes, different sorts of visibilities. So there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of potential. Uh, we can also go and edit the properties and we can see there are disabled, default, focus states, error states. We have different variants. It's absolutely incredible. And so let's say we have a user table that we actually want to include here. Maybe we want to replace uh, this element with our new table so we can drag and drop a new table right there and let's just delete this and now bam we have a new design we have a much more intuitive uh graph there sorry not graph table and we can see people's roles design we can press our ellipsis to get some more options and just like that i've just completely redesigned that section like that you know so there's so much potential with this application to speed up your processes so if you've liked this video if you've learned anything please drop a comment subscribe hit the like button and in the next video i'll be actually starting from scratch for a client project and it will be end to end i will start building it inside of subframe and then once we're done with the design we'll then move on to actually building the application out uh, inside of my own ide and we'll go from design and idea to uh, project finish in an entire episode so that will be really exciting and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next one cheers